It's one of the things I find most striking is the presence of Antarctica on ancient maps, because we didn't discover it until 1820. Once again, Graham Hancock is at the center of a startling discovery that challenges mainstream history. In his usual manner, Hancock has proposed new theories that promise to rewrite modern history as we know it. In this case, the focus is the icy desert of Antarctica and how it is linked with a long lost civilization. The exciting part of Hancock's latest work is that although this lost civilization is unknown in historical accounts, it is more advanced than the known ancient civilizations. What happened to this civilization that forced it away from the surface of the earth? And how did we miss out on knowing such an advanced ancient society? Join us in this video as we explore why Graham Hancock breaks down in tears, claiming Antarctica is not what we are told. Graham Hancock is not a new face when it comes to being at the forefront of narrative-changing discoveries. The British journalist turned explorer has had a thing for lost civilizations for some decades, with several investigations and discoveries to his name. Hancock's research has led him to publish three successful books on human prehistory that have generated mixed reactions worldwide. Antarctica seems to be his latest fascination. Although it is the fifth largest planet, Antarctica is the Earth's least populated and southernmost planet. Despite being 40% larger than Europe, most parts of Antarctica are covered in ice sheets, with an average thickness of 1.9 kilometers. So you can understand the world's fascination with this far-flung icy desert ever since it was first explored in 1820. Before the Russian expedition, led by Fabian Gottlieb and Mikhail Lazarev, resulted in the first discovery of the ice shelves of Antarctica, the world knew little to nothing about the existence of this continent. Even though the succeeding decades saw a more organized exploration of Antarctica by different countries, there are still many mysteries and puzzles about the continent. Chief among the questions is whether humans once occupied Antarctica during ancient times. There was no answer to this question until Graham Hancock came around with his titillating discovery. Looking through Hancock's eyes, we see a new picture of Antarctica, one that we never knew existed. Hancock's fascination with lost civilizations has helped us to learn about the possible existence of an advanced civilization in Antarctica long before we came around. This sounds unbelievable and has generated debates in the archaeological community. Some archaeologists agree with Hancock, while some others believe that there is no sufficient evidence for us to conclude. Yet Hancock remains resolute in letting us know that history is not as we imagine it to be. According to Hancock, human history is not simply from the primitive to the modern era. To him, human civilization takes a cyclic progression instead of the linear progression documented in scientific texts. From Hancock, we understand that there are periods of growth, birth, rebirth, and extinction in human civilization. He proved this in his 1995 publication, Fingerprints of the Gods. In this book, Hancock argues that there was an advanced civilization in prehistory. He stated that this civilization is the progenitor of every other known ancient civilization. This is where it gets exciting because Hancock is implying that there was a civilization long before the ancient Egyptians or Sumerians roamed the surface of this planet. Interesting, isn't it? What is more intriguing is that Hancock tells us that this civilization was quite advanced. What then happened to these folks? Why do we not know about them till now? These are the questions hanging in the air. Hancock proposed that this civilization became extinct around the end of the last ice age. However, there were survivors from the cataclysmic event that ended the civilization. These remnants were the ones who passed on knowledge of subjects such as astronomy, architecture, and mathematics to the succeeding civilizations. Now, this is where the story takes a more interesting turn. The ancient civilization that Hancock is talking about existed in Antarctica. Although it is the same Antarctica we know today, this one lay farther from the South Pole. The location change is believed to have happened due to a major pole shift that occurred in the world. According to Hancock, 
This unusual event likely happened in 10,450 BC. This pole shift hypothesis didn't start from Hancock, though. An American professor and author, Charles Hapgood, first pushed this idea through his theory of Earth crustal displacement. This theory has received support from some scientists in the geological community. But this is not the only evidence that supports the argument. Neither is this the most distinct part of this Antarctica story. We see further evidence from ancient world maps, some highlighting how Antarctica looked in the past. The Piri race map is the most popular of such centuries-old maps. Compiled in 1513 by an Ottoman admiral and cartographer, an analyzed Piri race map shows us an untold side of Antarctica. One look at this map, and we see a depiction of the South American southern tip, and what is regarded as the northern part of Antarctica that is free from ice. This is shocking, because it shows we only know a little about this icy desert. And when we look at it, no one is to be blamed because we only began exploring this continent in the 19th century. This is why Hancock's work in exploring the deep secrets of Antarctica is commendable. An analysis of the Piri race map shows that it accurately describes the Southern American coastline for that period, which is a testament to its accuracy. Furthermore, the fact that these show an ice-free Antarctica has raised a few unanswered questions in the minds of geographers and archaeologists. Although Hancock's theories have answered many of these questions, one that remains unsolved is how a map from the early 16th century successfully portrays a landmass that wouldn't be discovered till 300 years later. The Orontaeus Phineas map is another cartographic evidence Hancock often used to support his arguments on Antarctica. The map, created in 1531, shows a detailed description of Antarctica. Like the Piri Race map, this map shows an ice-free Antarctica with a topography that almost matches the land mass beneath the ice as revealed by modern seismic surveys. You know what this means, right? The existing land mass had been submerged due to pole shift causing floods. Again, we are forced to ask ourselves this question. How did a map from the 16th century accurately depict a landmass that would only be discovered three centuries later and thousands of years before we had the technology to survey the land beneath the ice? Although debatable, Hancock has succeeded in coming up with a possible answer to this question. He believes the maps were created by referencing older sources now lost to time. He believes that the original maps were created by a very advanced civilization capable of sophisticated cartography and sea travel that existed long before conventional ancient history. If we agree with this narrative, it means that this civilization had probably taken time to map out the world during the last ice age, when sea levels were lower and Antarctica had not yet gained its icy cover. Our friend Charles Hapgood also has something to say about these maps. Hapgood, who authored maps of the ancient cities, believes maps were created using advanced spherical trigonometry. From all indications, it is clear that this level of knowledge is not associated with the typical ancient civilizations that are recorded in historical texts. Another evidence that Hancock presents to support his theory is the existence of megalithic structures worldwide. According to Hancock, megalithic structures, such as the pyramids of Giza and Moai of Easter Island, depict an astronomical alignment that suggests an advanced knowledge of astronomy, mathematics, and architecture beyond what is commonly ascribed to their creators. And it seems we have to agree with Hancock on this one because modern engineers are still baffled by the precision and design of these masterpieces. It is almost unbelievable that those civilizations could construct such structures. This is why Hancock might be right in saying that an earlier, more advanced civilization had existed. Despite the arguments against Hancock's hypothesis, traditional archaeology and history have been unable to fully understand or draw an agreeable conclusion on the complexity and sophistication of these ancient monuments. Traditional archaeologists still have a hard time developing a theory that explains how these structures were constructed. Thus, Hancock seems to have the upper hand in this debate. In addition, Hancock has succeeded in unsettling the narrative where the structures are viewed as separate evidence of isolated brilliance. Instead, he takes us through a different lens where we should see them as interconnected evidence of global civilizations. 
these monuments shouldn't be seen as standout relics that bore evidence of the ancient civilizations they have been ascribed to. Hancock is asking us to put behind this notion and accept the possibility that they were constructed by much earlier civilizations that walked the surface of our planet. This sounds incredible, isn't it? Hancock's interest in the lost civilizations of our planet didn't stop after he released Fingerprints of the Gods. He never for once relented in his pursuit to learn more about the possible ancient civilizations that are not documented in historical texts. This pursuit for more information led him to write another book, Magicians of the Gods, which is considered a sequel to Fingerprints of the Gods. In Magicians of the Gods, Hancock presented new information and a more developed theory based on the Younger Dryas impact hypothesis. Hancock proposes that the Younger Dryas climate event had caused widespread destruction worldwide, leading to a short return to Ice Age conditions, followed by massive flooding. The ripple effect of these widespread floods is the alteration of the continental landscape, thereby shifting the position of Antarctica. Furthermore, this catastrophic event destroyed coastal civilizations in and around the Atlantic, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific Ocean. Who knows, the famed Atlantis city might have been one of the victims. Although we might never have a widely accepted answer to this question, we are much closer to learning more about prehistoric times thanks to Hancock. The archaeologist's theory is further supported by new evidence from archaeological sites such as Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, the Roman Heliopolis in Lebanon, and the Egyptian pyramids. Contrary to what is assumed to be their period of construction, Hancock believes that parts of the sites were built more than 10,000 years ago. Although adherents of Orthodox archaeology and history have argued against this narrative, they have been unable to prove how these ancient sites are associated with such sophisticated technology. This question keeps bugging the archaeological community and has remained unsolved for years. But then, Hancock has presented a theory that possibly puts to rest this lingering question. Hancock suggests that these sites were constructed by the various global civilizations, destroyed by the Younger Dryas climate event. One of the examples that Hancock readily refers to is Gobekli Tepe. The site is dated to have been built around 9600 BC, and it is a beacon of complex architectural design and astronomical alignment. The site contains massive stone pillars that are considered the world's oldest known megaliths. The high level of precision and advanced knowledge displayed in the construction of Gobekli Tepe means that Hancock is right to have called the site a smoking gun. This proves that a high level of knowledge existed at the end of the last ice age. Revelations like this shed light on gray areas that mainstream history doesn't cover. Hancock takes his revelations on prehistoric civilizations to a greater level by examining some of their activities. For example, he explains that the people of these lost civilizations used psychoactive substances. He argued that these ancient societies couldn't have achieved some monumental works without dabbling into psychoactive substance use. He further stated that an altered state of consciousness was a major part of these civilizations. He claims that these substances were used for religious rites, healing, and to gain insight into the nature of reality. Although this narrative has faced many opposing views, Hancock is unmoved because it is evidence of a bigger notion. Our ancestors were not only more sophisticated and advanced than us in the practical sense, but they also possessed deep metaphysical and spiritual knowledge. If we are to examine this further, it probably explains why they were able to construct edifices and sites with such precise astronomical alignment. Hancock also enlightens us that the survivors of this lost civilization passed down the use of psychoactive substances to succeeding civilizations like the Sumerians and Egyptians. Adding intrigue to Hancock's research is the phantom islands of the Arctic, depicted in several medieval maps. These islands, which no longer exist, were featured in maps from the 14th to 16th century, but were nowhere to be found in later maps. Hancock tells us that these islands might be remnants of an older seafaring civilization that could navigate the Arctic waters when they were more accessible. Hopefully, we'll uncover more information about this prehistoric seafaring civilization in the coming days. 
Critics of Hancock's theories on lost civilizations say that these maps are likely the guesswork of medieval cartographers. However, we know that Hancock shares a different opinion because he considers them hints of a hidden history that is just coming to light. Despite the mixed reactions that have greeted Hancock's work, he is undeterred in his journey to uncover lost civilizations, and this has seen expression in his study of Antarctica. On one side, Hancock's work has been attacked because it doesn't follow the regular scientific rigor. Conversely, it has received applause for boldly questioning established narratives. Hancock's research has forced us to re-examine our assumptions of the past and the possibility that our history is more profound than we previously thought. The highlight of Hancock's investigations into lost civilization was when he embarked on an expedition to Antarctica. Although he had dug up a lot of facts that make up previously unknown history, Hancock decided to take his work further by visiting Antarctica to explore the icy continent. The expedition had one clear goal, to uncover whatever secret lay hidden beneath the icy sheets of the continent. Hancock knew that whatever secret was discovered would write a new chapter in the history books and possibly rewrite certain narratives about the continent. Unlike the first set of explorers who visited Antarctica, the journey has become less arduous in the 21st century due to technological advancement. Despite this, the journey to Antarctica is no mere task. It requires a lot of persistence as you move towards the edge of the Earth to see the ice desert continent. As expected, Hancock faced numerous challenges on this expedition, ranging from harsh weather conditions and isolation to very rough terrains, amongst others. He successfully scaled through these obstacles because he was driven by the desire to uncover new evidence about the long-lost civilization. However, he didn't do the work alone as he worked with a team of experts and explorers based on a well-researched and outlined plan. The team worked with the right equipment, clothing, and survival gear on the expedition. It's the only way they could survive on the continent. Armed with an itinerary of activities and contingency plans, Hancock and his team arrived on the continent to meet glistening icebergs and endless rows of ice sheets covering the landmass. This expedition was a mix of physical exploration and intellectual pursuit, as they continuously referenced Hancock's previous research on ancient maps. The latter helped to make their work easy, as they were not starting from ground zero, but had something to guide the direction of their investigations. When we look at it, the expedition achieved the subtle goal of forcing us to challenge our understanding of physical history and explore the potential of species existing on our planet. Hancock's historic expedition helped to unearth a past that traditional archaeology has chosen to ignore and not talk about. Despite critics labeling Hancock's theories pseudoscience, he remains unmoved because he believes his investigation helps us understand that conventional history could be much older and more complex than we imagined. The early days of Hancock's expedition were really tough for the team. However, things took a good turn shortly after as they had a breakthrough in their investigation. By using ground-penetrating radar, Hancock and his team came upon a discovery that could alter previously held beliefs about human history. They discovered anomalies in the ice and spotted irregular patterns inconsistent with natural formations. This can only mean that there are likely man-made structures hidden beneath the layers of ice. The question on everyone's mind was how did the artificial structures find themselves deep under the ice sheets? Excited by what they had stumbled upon, the team was encouraged to scan the area intensively and collect data to be processed and analyzed. After waiting a while in the harsh weather environment of the continent for the data to be analyzed, the results finally came out, and it came with a shocking new narrative. One look at the picture of the anomalies, and you will notice that they are structured in a grid-like pattern. This pattern can be interpreted as a city layout or an architectural plan. Furthermore, the analyzed data revealed the existence of large geometric structures beneath the ice. At this junction, the team knew that they likely had a monumental discovery on their hands. This is because it can validate theories of lost civilizations, rewriting certain chapters in human history. The analyzed data told a story that once upon a time, a civilization called Antarctica was its home. From all indications, 
We are talking about a technological civilization with superior skills and knowledge than other known ancient civilizations. It's a pity that this civilization was lost during the last stages of the Ice Age. Before we close the curtain on this civilization, we must ask ourselves a pertinent question. How did such an advanced civilization survive in such a harsh environment as Antarctica? We can get our answer by examining the Earth's climatic history. Hancock, alongside other proponents, suggests that during the last stage of the Ice Age, Antarctica was in a far different state. It was not the icy desert that we see now. Instead, the continent had a temperate climate suitable for human habitation. This further proves that the ancient maps are right in depicting Antarctica. Furthermore, a recent development is that geological surveys have confirmed that parts of Antarctica were ice-free as recently as 12,000 years ago. This discovery supports Hancock's earlier theories. As expected, critics have raised concerns about the validity of Hancock's latest discovery in Antarctica. They say it could be due to a natural or mistaken interpretation of data. They also didn't fail to highlight the importance of rigorous scientific scrutiny through research and peer review. Yet, if we are focused on all these, we would be missing out on the cryptic message that Hancock's expedition to Antarctica is passing across. Hancock's investigation into the lost civilization is proof that our ancestors were not merely cavemen who began advancing as the centuries passed by. Instead, we have much older ancestors at the forefront of academia and technology. This ancient civilization lived in a much more advanced society than we have given our ancestors credit for. The striking thing about Hancock's discovery of Antarctica is not the fact that it reveals much about our past. Instead, it implies a lot about our present and future. If we could forget or miss out on such an important part of our history, what else are we missing? Who knows what other discoveries exist that would rewrite the pages of human history? These are the questions we should ponder as we begin to navigate the challenges of our future. Scientists and archaeologists alike have been forced to start re-examining previously held beliefs. Hancock has challenged everyone to look further at what we have assumed to be possible and seek out new possibilities. Who knows what other piece of evidence about this lost civilization of Antarctica will be uncovered in the coming days, or the new prehistoric civilization Hancock or other archaeologists may discover in the future. Let's keep our fingers crossed till then. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.